Thank you, Iveta. I think this was also a very interactive uh, part uh, because you had uh, many pictures to show. And now I would like to invite um, the following people, uh, namely Kaspar Suozolinch, head of the task force on protecting the integrity of elections in Latvia uh, from the state uh, chancellor. Uh, Janis Sart, uh, Stratcom um, director, uh, representative from CNAB, um, Aljoshina. Um, Mr. Straume is uh, very sorry uh, for not being able to attend for those foreign uh, Foreign guests, I can say that we have a great corruption case uh, that is ongoing and uh, CNAB is working uh, day and night. Uh, Ines Libinja Egner, Deputy Speaker of the Parliament of um, Latvia, and um, in Inge Spring from Re Baltic, uh, the Baltic Centre for Investigative uh, Journalism. So I will start with Kaspars and with a question to you. Uh, you, Mr. Ozolings, were responsible for coordination of uh, the safety of our elections. And uh, what are your main conclusions? after these elections. Thank you. And hello, I will stand up in order to, for everyone to see me and to have this eye contact with you. Thank you uh, very much for your question. Um, I can mention the following things um, that uh, we have um, made a special task force group um, um, under the state chancellery and we uh, worked on um, integrity and protection of um, uh, public space because this new environment uh, where um, our elections took place namely new technologies and possibilities to use um, um, these technologies that could be influenced in a friendly manner. This was our main task for our task force. Um, in our task force, we had many institutions um, working together, law enforcement agencies, and uh, we exchanged information, communicated, coordinated um, during pre-election and election time. And one other of our main tasks were monitoring of um, media space, uh, internet m space, um, radio, television, also uh, publications um, in, to the extent um, to, to, our, to, to the extent that is possible. Elections um, is a very good moment in order to indicate the temperature of uh, media space or information space because uh, everyone's attention uh, is focused there, uh, namely internal, inter external players if they want to influence as well as um, society's um, influence and uh, focus to the process. This um, is um, the right moment when to influence elections in a friendly manner. And these 13th um, elections allowed us to measure and analyze uh, the quantitative indicators of unfriendly flow of influence. And um, to, uh, these are our main conclusions about our, our exter external informative influence. We didn't see any coordinated a campaign with a um, unique um, um, unique uh, wish to influence uh, uh, elections. Uh, our elections were not main topic uh, in the media of Russia. Uh, these, um, these elections were mentioned uh, on the uh, background of other uh, negative news pieces, amongst other negative news pieces. Uh, this was just uh, one uh, question. Uh, that uh, Russian media uh, mentioned. And influence of uh, these elections has to be uh, evaluated in a broader spectrum. 
And what is this broader spectrum, how we can evaluate the impact or the influence of others, namely uh, uh, the unfriendly um, affirmations um, about processes in Latvia uh, happen before elections, during elections, and they um, are ongoing. Other conclusions are the following. Uh, Russian media uh, were uh, s selective and they just reacted to events happening in Latvia. And this influence, uh, but, but this influence happened. We didn't live in a sterile environment. It, it happened. Uh, no doubt about it, and uh, we can um, uh, we can assume that uh, by support to some parties, as well as um, about news um, on parallel events ongoing in Latvia, not uh, connected with elections. Um, the um, attention was brought to two or three political parties, and those uh, voters or electorate. Uh, who uh, chooses only Vesti or uh, uh, first uh, channel, first Russian channel, uh, they cannot, uh, they do not know know the whole picture uh, because um, only some parties are um, uh, being depicted there or mentioned there. Uh, if we, if you want figures, then uh, uh, those r pro-Russian political parties were in those channels were mentioned 600 times more often uh, than um, the, than um, the opposing parties or Latvian-speaking parties. Uh, also, what we concluded. And uh, this was also validated by the res uh, pre uh, results of the previous survey. From Providus, so there we can see that uh, voters of Saskanya didn't go to vote, mm, failed to attend um, elections. And that was very interesting. Also, uh, we concluded. Uh, when we tried uh, to uh, find out the quantitative amount of uh, viewers in one or the other um, internet portal, uh, this pro-Kremlin, these pro-Kremlin pro uh, channels, uh, their electorate, uh, part of the electorate, is kind of isolated and they uh, live in a bubble. and. Um, uh, this information is not going outside this bubble or outside the group of um, people uh, who live in this bubble. And these news um, have not been uh, multiplied or brought to other channels. Uh, very few uh, outsiders uh, could be influenced or were influenced uh, by this the pro Kremlin disinformation, um, agency Rossiya Sivodnya, uh, also um, acting here in Latvia, uh, could not uh, make a stable position, and their um, um, part of uh, viewers and readers uh, actually grow smaller. Uh, the majority of um, users of information in Russian language uh, reads. Latvian news, or not in, in Latvian, but in Russian, but uh, Latvian news, um, namely Delphi and others. But uh, we also could uh, see that uh, long-term attempts, negative uh, attempts from uh, Russia, uh, very much correspond uh, to what was uh, valid, namely 68% consider that any changes could be better and any politicians uh, could be better or that they um, uh, 
the government is corrupt and those in power are corrupt and um, th this is very valid with long-term attempts uh, to influence um, Latvia's electorate from the side of Russia. So if we talk about um, in, in, informative influence, this is not uh, tackling just elections, but this is long-term in, in interference and influence. Um, internet media is um, very important, and um, this is a place where majority uh, learns about politicians and parties. Um, but we um, understood that a very polarized or scandalous uh, scandalous content of uh, pieces of news are the, those who influence the electorate, not just the presence of a party uh, on one or the other um, uh, media platform. So uh, we believe that in the future, uh, those very polarized um, uh, polarized pieces of news uh, will be reality. Uh, society is being fragmented more and more into group, into interest groups. <coughs> and th these uh, groups stand uh, apart from political processes um, in the country very often. Uh, one more thing. Uh, uh, what I wanted to say, initially we were afraid that uh, with the help of social media, we uh, the vo uh, uh, elections will be influenced in a negative way. That is not true. On the contrary, my conclusion is the following. Uh, society, when knowing and by knowing the threats and uh, the outcome of, uh, of elections could be influenced, and uh, what we know, um, learning from other countries outside Latvia from 2016, the society was ready for this uh, influence from outside and rather knowledgeable about that. And uh, that's one good thing. And the other good thing is that media acknowledge that they can be a tool for manipulation and they could um, fall a uh, victim of manipulation and thus manipulate others. Um, in our elections, social media were um, not used uh, in order to influence um, elections negatively in a negative way, but um, they offered uh, possibilities to influence uh, processes ongoing in the country in a rather positive way. And those positive things that uh, strengthened our elections uh, were the following, uh, namely um, individual experts, NGOs, organizations, and on all the media uh, engaged into cleansing or sanitizing uh, the space of information before um, elections, as well as initiated uh, the society to uh, be opened um, and to follow the traceability of um, financing of parties and their um, uh, and all kinds of of their uh, um, attempts to popularize um, themselves. So, if we usually say that our main task is to uh, take part um, in elections to attend then um, this time I can say that those who um, appeared and, uh, and went to elections uh, also participated in cleansing of um, information space. And um, our society kind of became even more civic. Uh, they didn't only appear and voted, but they also stood guard and uh, took uh, part in all kinds of activities for safeguarding information, other po uh, positive things uh, that these, uh, uh, these um, attempts of Russia uh, very often uh, stay uh, only in the channels where they publish and they uh, no longer uh, are uh, 
are translated. Uh, one journalist uh, was um, not uh, allowed uh, in uh, in uh, to enter the territory of Latvia because of his uh, very hostile affirmations. Um, usually, and, and uh, this was all, uh, of course, told and um, announced in Russia. Uh, but this time, it wasn't uh, so broad, and it, these news were not uh, translated into Russia uh, into um, Latvian. Uh, what uh, we can learn for the future? Um. Namely, there is a trend that the number of voters uh, will decrease. The so-called protest vote that is quite persistent and, and it will keep uh, being um, relevant. There are also voters who are um, not uh, critically assessing the offered content and also have to assess and evaluate the information space because all of this will guide political um, choices in the future. There's also a huge potential for populism, for um, lower quality of uh, local politics and also if participation rates drop then the le legitimacy of the political outcomes uh, will not be as good as we would like to, exp uh, to see. But if we continue cooperation in a way as we did in, 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 these, uh, in, in the case of these elections, um, and if this continues in the long term, starting from today, I think we have uh, much better prospects of uh, protecting the integrity of our information space, of uh, our ideas, and uh, the solidarity of the public and resistance uh, to such uh, attempts. Thank you. Uh, we'll definitely have uh, additional questions. And now I would like to give the floor to Ms. Liebenegner. Uh, I believe the parliament and especially so the National Security Commission definitely followed uh, the pre-election process. So what did you see as a um, lawmaker? Uh, what were the good things, the bad things, uh, what needs to be changed, uh, what needs to be done and so on? Yes, uh, I was in charge of the National Security Commission before, uh, sorry, until the election. And Saima or the Parliament uh, definitely realized the risks that were just explained. And as a result, we decided about a certain format, namely how resources could be used. So we established this working group uh, chaired by Mr. Wazulinch and representatives from security structures, uh, the members of parliament, uh, other representatives uh, participated. And it was possible to determine whether it is needed, necessary, uh, maybe to change uh, the current regulation even shortly before the election to ensure that the elections are free and uh, nobody interferes in these elections. Um, I would like to use this opportunity to say a huge thank you to the non-governmental sector and public media because they were very, very responsible and they, uh, they performed their primary task. They tried to dig deeper. And, and, and see where the information comes from, who is the source or what is the source of information, what is the purpose of information, and try to educate voters on these aspects because during previous election or pre-election campaign, media did not really focus on these aspects then. Uh, there were, of course, a few incidents uh, mentioned by Ms. Kajuoka in her presentation, one larger scandal. Uh, namely, um, quite a large business newspaper was involved. Uh, some believed that they, uh, by this campaign, uh, circumvented the law and used some gaps in the law. Some were of a different opinion. 
But there were also uh, minor cases when, for example, some politicians uh, made public their idyllic family pictures because they thought, you know, if I am not uh, standing as a candidate, this is not a pre-election advertising material. And then there was these questions like, do you have to remove this picture or not? So these maybe were the most visible problems, incidents that we faced. But uh, we speak about uh, social networks and their users. I think that this was the first real attempt when parties uh, really try to use uh, social networks for their purposes. And uh, during the presentation of Ms. Kazuok, we saw that classification of voters and certain groups uh, by income level, by education, other objective factors and interest. Of course, that was um, very important, but uh, at the same time, a social media could be used uh, in a targeted way to approach these specific groups of voters. So uh, we as lawmakers and also the state as such uh, have to do everything possible to make sure that until the next election uh, issues like uh, protection of uh, personal data and other important imp uh, issues uh, discussed in a global arena uh, so that all these issues would be regulated by law and it is clear that social networks will always sell um, advertising possibilities also to political parties but they would still have to abide by the local law namely in Latvia there is a requirement that if it's a political uh, advertisement people have to know who financed it and it has to be stated clearly and uh, it is uh, unacceptable that political uh, advertisement uh, is financed from foreign sources that is a total no and there are also certain restrictions, clear restrictions in the, in the legislation that should be applied. And of course, considering the jurisdictional problems, not all social networks are ready uh, to uh, meet all these requirements. So um, they established a working group actually um, uh, was quite um, successful in dealing with various social networks and and in a friendly way, um, you know, discussed these issues with social media and, and, and ensured that uh, inappropriate content is removed. But of course, we cannot uh, work in this uh, pre-election uh, mode uh, or cannot continue to work in this pre-election mode for the next four years. So there should be certain regulatory framework not asking the Facebook, for example, to uh, meet these requirements, but requiring and demanding because it's the law. For example, if we look at the UK, uh, there is a grant committee established in the UK Parliament uh, where representatives from all, uh, sorry, from eight um, parliaments of other countries uh, work, France, uh, Canada, I believe uh, Brazil, and Latvia is one of uh, those countries. So we are starting to think about these issues and we are demanding responsibility, responsible attitudes from social networks, especially so in the use of, uh, in the context of the use of data for political advertising. Two weeks ago, the Grand Committee had a meeting in London and uh, Alan Richards from Facebook uh, arrived and, and he delivered the statement. And representing the Latvian Parliament, I was, I was, I was the most peaceful of those present because I had no direct uh, claims against what the Facebook has done. I could not really like scold them for things uh, 
that Facebook has done, for example, resulting in very specific violations. But members of parliament from all the other countries uh, were able to provide very specific examples how the lack of this regulation affected activity of specific voter groups, their choices, including uh, instigating social unrest with very, very severe consequences. So um, now, uh, you know, elections have passed and, uh, and we might think that, you know, we know how to do and what to do uh, before the next election. I don't think uh, that we can be so complacent. Now it's the right time to start thinking about filling our legislative gaps and most probably uh, representatives of CNAB or the anti-corruption office uh, will also have certain opinions about that. And internationally, I think uh, social networks, uh, let's say, if not uh, on mandatory basis, but semi-mandatory basis would have to cooperate with st with states, so that these data that has been that have been provided to them would not be used uh, to circumvent uh, such principles as the freedom of speech and so on. Because these networks were created for people to exchange their ideas and and have access to information. Uh, of course, uh, I was also. Uh, I also participated in the pre-election campaign uh, because I was also one uh, running for the office. And I had uh, very different feelings during this period uh, before the election because there were certain, uh, certain ideas that the voters uh, wanted uh, to see uh, or certain uh, features that voters wanted to see in future members of parliament and in in in, in before these elections uh, we could really see that people were tired and as we saw from miss kajuoka a presentation people just wanted to be left alone they didn't want to be approached with any advertisements they just wanted to be in their Facebook account maybe see what their friends think and you know them about thank you you touched upon uh, social networks and whether they can be controlled or not so maybe now we can give the mic to Miss Alyoshina because before election, everyone believes that the anti-corruption office is doing great, monitoring the process. But of course, about social networks, there were always many questions. Uh, do you really uh, have any ability to affect what parties do in these social networks? And how did you cooperate and how did it work out with those large social networks, social giants? Uh, before I start, I would like to apologize on behalf of Mr. Strauma because uh, we have lots of work, we have a huge case ongoing, and lots of resources have to be diverted uh, to these criminal proceedings. So, how we prepared for, uh, for this election? The first thing we did, we studied foreign experiences uh, with regard to 2016-17 elections. Uh, 2016 in the US, uh, the presidential elections, and we uh, were, were able to establish that the biggest threat uh, actually uh, are um, humor pages or joke pages. These pages are used for uh, election purposes, not really indicating on whose behalf it is done and whether anyone has paid for this kind of um, content. That was the first big lesson that we learned. The second lesson was presidential election in France 2017 when Emmanuel Macron was elected. Uh, the most serious gap that we saw was the day before election because the so-called Panama documents emerged, 
namely is that you know Mr. Macron allegedly has uh, immobile property somewhere abroad. At the same time, a fake page was created uh, for the largest newspaper in France who allegedly confirmed that all of this is true, that this uh, presidential candidate really has property abroad. So the public was misled by using the name of the largest newspaper uh, by creating a fake page. So these were the um, two major examples that, uh, or the two major cases that made us uh, think that we really have to invest serious effort in preparation. So we started uh, by establishing a contact with the largest social networks, including by diplomatic channels. So we approached Facebook, Google, basically the largest market players uh, in other countries. And considering the French and, and the American experience, they were very forthcoming. They supported us. And what we did here we explained first and foremost uh, what are the requirements of the national law, what political parties uh, have to uh, meet, what are the requirements uh, during pre-election period. We also explained what we would uh, would want to see from, from them, what would be the cooperation model between our organization and these social networks, what information we could expect uh, from them and what we could receive from them uh, to um, implement pre-election monitoring. And I have to acknowledge that there is cooperation ongoing, uh, especially so, maybe the U.S. scandal after the presidential election when Facebook uh, finally understood that they also have to do something, not only with regards to the U.S. or large countries, but also all the countries. So what did we conclude? And what were, uh, what were our uh, biggest challenges? The, challenge, the biggest challenge was the so-called uh, satiric pages or humor or joke pages, and we really monitored them closely. And I would like to say thank you to the public who uh, was very actively uh, contributing and used the uh, application developed by our organization. Also, other law enforcement agencies and mass media provided this information. Because if we didn't uh, join our forces, I do not think we would have succeeded. Of course, uh, the checks are still ongoing because we have to uh, complete them within six months. We have to compare uh, our data with whatever we have received from Facebook. But briefly, I can say, yes, there are certain discrepancies between what was declared to us by political parties and the information submitted or given to us by Facebook. So how, how did we proceed in this regard? Uh, we had specific accounts that we monitored. Uh, we sent a request uh, to Facebook, and Facebook uh, uh, returned uh, information about whether this has been a political advertisement and uh, what was uh, how much was paid for it and who paid for it and we did the same with regards to these uh, satirical pages and compiled similar information about them future challenges um, especially so with regards to regulatory framework Political parties uh, would, uh, we expect that political parties would uh, have an obligation to declare all the uh, social media online accounts that the party uses for, uh, uh, for election purposes, uh, including anonymous pages, including these satirical pages. The next problem that we faced is the speed of uh, information, speed uh, or the 
um, period uh, during which we can receive information from Facebook, uh, how quickly they can react and send information to us, especially so with regards to the most relevant information, especially so uh, within one week before the election, because this is the most sensitive period, because anything can crop up in the public space. And I have to say that we did not discover any scandals or major violations in social networks. I don't know whether it's good or bad, but we still believe it's a risk factor, namely the speed of uh, information exchange. So I think uh, that would be it from our side. Most probably you'll have some clarification questions, but these were the uh, biggest trends, uh, let's say, that guided our work. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to Inge Sprinje from Re Baltica, who has a lot of experience uh, with regards to cooperation with these networks, and maybe not as positive as we just heard. So maybe you can tell uh, what uh, you as a center did before the election, and maybe use some new tools that other media had not used before. Everyone, by listening to um, others, I think that I live in another country. Everyone is cooperating. Facebook and Google is a cooperative. I have been uh, living in a different Latvia all the time, and I'm a journalist. I always spoil the party. I'm going to spoil it uh, to this time as well. I represent um, the center. Uh, Red Baltica. I represent uh, investigative journalism. I spent um, last year in America. I also saw what happened with Russians' attempt to influence presidential elections in um, the United States, and I understood that uh, our um, a, our uh, elections will be influenced as well. And I do not know uh, why. Uh, information research um, agency is uh, still not reported on by the Facebook to our um, respective countries. What we did, uh, we gathered together uh, all the media and we wanted to monitor uh, social media and we um, uh, use Pro Publica, Pro Collector, where we in invited people to install on, on their computers. Uh, this program and um, this tool collected all paid posts, including political ads. So we saw um, everything together uh, from those who uh, installed this tool. Uh, so we uh, collected about 200 to 400 uh, ads, political ads, uh, as well as we had another uh, uh, tool, Crowd Tank, uh, which allowed us to monitor uh, groups of people. Uh, and we monitored uh, 500 Facebook groups and uh, pages where there, there were more than uh, several hundreds of pages that we monitored. And here are the results. These elections were different from others because our politicians have understood that there are political net um, um, media networks. In Latvia, 700,000 people uh, use Facebook and YouTube on a daily basis, and YouTube belongs to uh, Google, if you do not understand uh, how it goes. Uh, Instagram is uh, um, on the rise, and Twitter is uh, slowly descending, and Knab understood that as well. And um, uh, for the previous elections, political parties uh, had to come up with their expenditures only on uh, um, on traditional media, but uh, according to the legislation and CNAB required that uh, political parties also had to provide information on money spent uh, through social media, and that was one-tenth uh, of all the resources. How important are uh, social media? Those uh, can be very efficient if if um, this uh, person, for example, uh, lives on social mark, uh, social networks. Uh, a good example, Progressiva Party. Um, it, uh, its electorate is about 60, uh, is very, very small, but uh, their voters are young people and their uh, political uh, and their um, expenditure was targeted or, or uh, micro-targeted to specific groups, uh, let's say, on uh, Facebook. 
uh, if the problem was about environment, then uh, this money or um, this um, campaign was targeted to those groups who involve I mean, to environmental issues. And uh, you can see the results, how this party did very well. Uh, also, KPLV also used 40% of their budget for social na networks, and they were very active um, using organic reach, uh, using fa Facebook algorithms. Uh, they posted videos that f Facebook likes. Uh, also, they um, did live stream videos, and fa Facebook algorithms uh, chose uh, those live stream videos uh, uh, more often. And we also can see from Providus research, 30% uh, of KPLV electorate didn't uh, uh, appeared for the previous elections, and uh, this was valid for uh, pe for people with lower income, for uh, people living in the countryside. Very uh, many of them uh, this time didn't fail to attend. Uh, every fifth uh, person uh, uh, in Latvia received m most of the information from social network. And if we speak that we live in a fragmented world, then we have to think more about what we do and how we regulate social networks. Well, of course, we didn't see very clear violations when paid uh, Paid notions from other countries uh, appeared, but there were anonymous um, joke pages as well as anonymous ad pages. Um, I do not have a direct proof. I cannot see who created uh, those pages. Uh, this is another missing link on Facebook. Um, but what I saw that those pages were created um, very short term before elections, and those pages. Uh, were very, um, um, were, were speaking very ill uh, on um, uh, on uh, on party or about parties. So uh, people, uh, if and, and it doesn't require us a lot. Uh, just make come up with uh, some scandalous news uh, like um, our minister of. Um, uh, for health and come up with uh, information how much uh, certain medicine uh, costs and uh, many, many, many people will be very interested in that. <clears throat> uh, Knapp says that they uh, asked for uh, information about the creators of these pages, but unfortunately, um, Facebook didn't disclose this information, and I believe this uh, is a shortage um, oh, about regulation, and um, those pages should contain um, administrate the name of administrator or um, an owner of an account. Uh, what is different there uh, in uh, Facebook pages? Well, if an individual wants uh, to um, create a page or an enterprise wants to create a page, they have to disclose inf information. Uh, but there can be uh, closed groups. There can be um, anonymous. Um, anonymous uh, users or secret groups. Uh, for example, a group for Kaiming or a neighbor. Um, um, I do, we do not know how many uh, secret groups are there, and um, this cannot be monitored. And what is happening in the and within these groups and amongst those groups. They, this is one thing, and I believe that um, these uh, uh, joke pages and these uh, secret groups are closely linked, as well as ad page. Uh, let's say Liepaja buy and sell, and all of a sudden the administrator of um, this page becomes Artus um, a leader of one of the parties, and he, uh, this is our program, etc., etc., and I believe that uh, Mr. Ozolinsch and um, uh, Chancellor uh, fostered uh, the fact that this uh, page was closed. Um, also, Kurpaist, uh, where to eat, um, in Latvian and in Russian, the cover photo was um, ch changed very shortly before the elections, and the cover page uh, all of a sudden contains two pictures of um, uh, these parties' leaders, as well as uh, uh, information about this party. So. Um, 
it cannot be disclosed who paid for this change. And But this indicates the shortages uh, in our um, legislation. And uh, for the f uh, future elections, if we had something like uh, Macron's um, uh, Macron's properties abroad. How fast we can close this information, uh, this um, this page, this uh, piece of information, and disclose the true facts? Uh, there has to be a chain of how uh, Facebook should react. Um, Speaking about um, cooperation with, with and amongst media, Facebook is um, uh, trying to uh, to be friendly with um, government in, in with government. Uh, um, offices, institutions, uh, but they are not friendly towards others. They are, um, of course, um, not friendly with investigative journalists and with journalists as such. And I'm very glad that uh, you uh, created this Stratcom group. You should have it on a permanent basis, um, not uh, just for a period of time. This initiative should. Uh, be very loud and also we have um, this uh, legislative act and what happened with us as journalists we had uh, two different uh, experience with, with Facebook and uh, Google uh, Facebook has a very good uh, media representation um, um, they, but uh, this uh, guy uh, can come up with very um, very broad answers um, not in-depth uh, information. I give, uh, for example, this uh, PR person from Facebook con uh, specific information saying that the mayor of Riga uh, is an owner of so many uh, uh, pages. Uh, and um, can can you test uh, and, and uh, see to those pages uh, what is um, there and what is not? And he says, OK, um, we can't do anything because uh, we are short of um, of staff who, who could do and who could verify this information, and uh, what? But uh, what I did, I also, I always when um, uh, sending um, information to Facebook, um, made. Uh, it's clear that a copy of uh, this mail will also be sent to Mr. Uzwalink or others, and uh, thus Facebook uh, were a bit afraid of uh, of not responding. Uh, we also also had very specific uh, case uh, uh, when um, a 15 year old boy uh, together with um, his uh, father uh, came up with very false information uh, and uh, th those were google ads on um, google ads uh, with the piece of news that, for example, um, immigrants stabbed the woman in the center of Riga or a mall collapsed uh, in the outskirts of Riga. And I informed uh, Google about that, uh, and they didn't react at all. Uh, so um, during the press conference, um, uh, if you do not didn't know, then Facebook is not fighting fake news. Uh, my colleague asked a question, uh, if you had uh, news that Tina Turner has died. She, she has not died, but if you have those, uh, this piece of uh, news, uh, uh, would you take it out uh, or, or close it? Uh, they said, no, uh, we wouldn't uh, close this information uh, because uh, this is freedom of speech. If Tina Turner herself would ask to close uh, or uh, to uh, erase these news, then we would erase. But otherwise, this is uh, freedom of speech, uh, and it's not hate speech. Uh, OK, uh, no one is uh, controlling fake news. Um, Nevertheless, about Latvia, we ask them uh, whether you have a person uh, knowing Latvian uh, and who is controlling um, this information, uh, these news in Latvian. Uh, they said that, yes, they do have, but not a specific person. They couldn't answer to, uh, to our direct questions. And I do not want to speak ill of this press secretary of, um, of um, Facebook, he even uh, he, he was very forthcoming, but uh, what what uh, my conclusions are, we should come up with a regulatory framework because we are a very small country. And But I don't know that we uh, should be alone in these attempts. Um, this should be European Union. Uh, 
taking this uh, piece of legislation and working on it. I know that in your working group, Brazil and other countries were um, included, but we should start with the European Union. And I will uh, this afternoon uh, chair um, uh, chair very interesting. Uh, Panel uh, and me and Michael from uh, British Parliament, we will come up with very specific suggestions. Uh, Facebook could be controlled in a similar way as the bank sector uh, is being controlled at the moment. That could be an uh, um, a supervisory institution, independent supervisory institution, uh, who could uh, uh, control. Uh, uh, everything uh, ongoing uh, in uh, on on social media. So that's uh, all from me at this um, stage. Uh, thank you, Inga. I uh, want uh, also to return um, in to 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 those drawbacks in our legislation. But we, amongst us, we have another person who is on a daily basis following what is happening in all kinds of media and about disinformation, etc., etc. Namely, Yanis Sar, director um, at the NATO Strat. Strategic Communication Center of, Ele of Excellence. So what you are monitoring and how for you Latvia's elections look like. Thank you very much. The good news is the following. Um, we didn't observe any big outside influences outside the traditional or expected influence. So uh, first conclusion, any election could be become uh, victim of inflation, but not every election becomes a uh, victim of um, outside uh, influence. Another conclusion, uh, decisions uh, as to do or not to do, uh, how to protect or not to protect is mm, these decisions are not being uh, taken by the state, but we should uh, create a system uh, where these attempts um, of influence become in, uh, inefficient. I know that uh, you are going to talk about uh, Sweden uh, and um, they were not influenced, their elections were not influenced uh, to a large extent similar to here, but one week before our elections there was a referendum in Macedonia about this uh, change of um, name of the state, and there we observed direct influence and large-scale influence. So my, con my conclusion is the following. The more uh, a country is ready for outside influence, the lesser is a likelihood that um, uh, something will be influenced in that particular country. The more you pre prepared you are, uh, the better. So uh, every time where there is a large outside influence, uh, it, uh, it was uh, happening because uh, someone was not ready or uh, a specific problem was not solved. Another conclusion, I believe uh, that these were the elections when, where oh, elections were directly uh, dependent on what was happening on social media, not uh, where people acquired information um, about um, elections, but where the uh, person acquired emotions about the processes of election uh, through social media, th social networks. And we are certain that uh, social media are the place where emotions travel around, not facts. And based on these emotions, people go and vote or act. So thus, it is very important. The uh, and, and uh, social media could influence influence emotions of our voters, and thus they took their decisions. It was to a larger scale than usually. Also, it uh, correlated, this information correlated to uh, so-called bubbles uh, existing on, uh, uh, on, on traditional media. Another conclusion or observation 
about this environment as such. Thank God. Oh, in Latvia, we do not have the most advanced tools and methods how to manipulate with informative space. Thank God. Um, may it. It is maybe due to the fact that we use Latvian language and um, um, and no one is interested in investing so much money in order to make those tools accessible um, for um, information sources in Latvian. Uh, but uh, we understand the importance that there are some unclear uh, Uh, big, uh, uh, unclear things or so whole called holes in our legislation that has to be mended uh, and has to be, be mended um, uh, until the next uh, election period and um, we have to regulate uh, uh, our attempts of course um, our uh, Our uh, official institutions uh, had the better experience with, let's say, Google and Facebook than journalists, but Google search can be manipulated and uh, everything can be manipulated. But even more important, it is YouTube, where it is very e easy to manipulate uh, what content uh, the person looks at. Uh, apart from the officially paid for with uh, certain uh, tricks and by knowing algorithm by buying uh, let's say artificial uh, a artificial number of viewers etc etc and um, the fact that we uh, do not understand to the full extent what can happen and that it is not being regulated is not normal I believe that uh, we have to create a a regulator or an ombudsperson uh, or an independent uh, observer where uh, people could report and uh, ring uh, their bells and who could influence something. But I, I believe that Latvia alone uh, will not uh, be taken uh, seriously. Uh, so I believe that uh, European Union uh, will uh, add their resources um, together and it will be possible in the next period um, of uh, Parliament. Uh, technologies de develop. Let's um, have a look at uh, Mexican elections, Brazilian elections. There, uh, WhatsApp it was the pla uh, platform where information was exchanged, where disinformation happened, where there were attempts to um, uh, affect elections to the certain event, um, uh, extent. Uh, we know that uh, WhatsApp te telegrams are coded platforms and we cannot control them, but we have seen that in uh, uh, many uh, countries uh, these platforms uh, can be used and are used. Uh, but my point is that technologies are developing and we have to understand that the next uh, SIMA elections will be in a completely different technological environment where there will be different uh, tools and solutions and I think that those will be even more uh, efficient in order to influence actions of the electorate and if we speak about our readiness then our main task is not only to look at the past of what we saw yesterday Today, but think, um, think what will uh, happen tomorrow. It is difficult. Otherwise, uh, we will build into the new regulatory framework again some holes that will be um, exploited uh, in a bad manner. Uh, um, on uh, Monday this week, we presented one of our experiment, experiment, namely on big data and how they influence. Um, Uh, actions of uh, people, uh, public, and uh, our conclusion is that big data directly influences our actions and people who do have access to big data, uh, they uh, can influence us um, even to a largest extent um, in the future as well as uh, in order to influence political processes. And my final conclusion is the following. In order to be prepared for the future against external um, 
external influence, uh, we have to uh, work on shortcomings that are existent in our legislation. Our small environment or, 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 or uh, small space, relatively small uh, space, um, does not allow or uh, kind of impedes uh, in income of big technologies to directly influence us <clears throat> today, but that doesn't mean that we will be interesting for someone tomorrow, and someone uh, might <clears throat> be interested in <clears throat> in spending money uh, to develop those tools in order to influence us tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Sartz. I think that we can um, uh, continue with the following. My question is to the members of par member of parliament, to Saima. We all identified these uh, loopholes or uh, shortcomings in our legislation, but specifically, what could be done from our legislators. Maybe the chancellery has some um, difficulties to answer right now, but maybe the parliament. Uh, you mentioned this high-level group that uh, you are a participant of. Um, what what should we do in order uh, to, to be sure that in four years, uh, when um, the social media will be even more influential, how to uh, tackle these issues, how to tidy these things? I see that the answer lies in international regulation, especially so with regards to social platforms, and several were mentioned. So we cannot rely only on national regulation. And uh, several speakers already mentioned possible EU uh, regulatory framework. Uh, that would be OK, but then the processes are very lengthy because next year we'll have a European Parliament election, and uh, until they convene and until they decide how they'll work, it will take time. And I don't think that uh, benefits us. I would be more positive about maybe some other international regulation, not maybe so much uh, rely on the bureaucratic EU regulatory framework. We as Latvia have uh, already um, approached the EU authorities on several occasions about these issues, about disinformation tools, about social media. Also, EU regulation, uh, regulations and a regulatory framework was used to disinform, to misinform the public. But uh, direction has not been what we expected. Yes, in Latvia, of course, we believe that EU regulation, of course, would be great, but it is very slow and very accurate tools that most probably will not manage to uh, complete by the next election. So I am much more positive about this international group because uh, large countries, uh, they are um, uh, also more uh, relevant and more important for these social networks. If we look at the size of Canada, for example, or UK, or France, also Brazil, they are interesting enough to these social media platforms to maybe listen to their opinions. We had several ideas uh, about how we could solve this and, and which international body could work with these issues. But I have to say that it's quite strange that this idea comes from uh, members of local parliaments, especially so considering the fact that we come from various continents and we are trying to find an international body that could deal with these issues. So that's a very unusual situation. But uh, because we are so small, so compact in Latvia, we can react faster. Maybe we can adopt solutions uh, faster. We understand that solutions are needed. Maybe Ms. Spring uh, concluded from what I said that we thought that everything was fine. No, it is not. It's not a normal situation that we just, you know, on friendly terms agree about something and we are thankful that you know they were so forthcoming. We should not be thankful for uh, 
the other party doing what they actually have to do. So this is just first step. We have to dig deeper and see what else we can achieve. Of course, um, in the Latvian Parliament, of course, we will follow all the proposals coming from the Anti-Corruption Office about any legislative proposals, for example, to prevent possible violations like in the case of DNS business. So we will definitely react uh, very, very quickly and, and work on these proposals as soon as they are received. I always speak about concrete things. Of course, we have to work on, on different fora, international and local. I don't think that it will require four years uh, to achieve something internationally because everyone realizes that this is a problem and politicians actually suffer most from this misinformation, so they have personal motivations. So it's like a personal issue now. So it's not something that is not, you know, feasible or... or so I really like uh, the approach of the UK Parliament. Uh, so far, I have seen only the interim report, not the final report. But they have very specific proposals, like regulatory uh, requirements, from uh, that would apply to Facebook, because what Facebook did, yes, they said will be more transparent, and you'll be able to see uh, which uh, posts are paid by whom. Yes, but it doesn't mean a lot because you can see this information only mm, uh, during the paid period. When the period expires, you cannot see that anymore. Maybe information could be accumulated. Uh, the British Parliament offered uh, to accumulate this information for five years. So maybe we can learn from them or maybe think about uh, this nationally. I don't know about French. I heard someone saying that the French have also thought of something. So maybe we can learn from them. In Latvia, I think we have to uh, keep uh, being active in this strategic communication group because it is very good that you monitor the situation. You approached all the services, all the agencies, uh, but this has to continue. I um, was in a conference in uh, Pjarnu in, um, in Estonia, and I saw that they have an enormous quantity for a small country like that of these Stratcom groups. Also, I have seen uh, on many occasions that, yes, uh, various governmental bodies and organizations recognize this being a problem. And, and everyone says, you know, many people get information from social networks, but nobody actually really knows who these people are, what media they consume, where they get the information. Because so far we have spoken about, you know, newspaper writing this, TV saying this, but now we have a totally new problem. Especially so speaking about the so-called populist parties, because we see that there is a, um, a group, a considerably uh, numerous group, a large group uh, that has effect, uh, that can, can affect what takes place, but they don't consume any media. They just have beliefs and they never learn from anything, from anywhere. So we need this. Uh, we need a study to find out how many of such people we have, how to approach them. Because uh, if a media publish uh, information uh, in uh, Facebook, it will not help because their rating, because their algorithm works in a way that the relevance of media uh, content uh, is uh, reduced. So uh, they focus on uh, groups. Maybe you can look at this maybe on the Baltic uh, area in Stratcom, uh, sorry, in Baltic region in Stratcom. How can I, as a representative of, of uh, media, prepare information for this information to be heard, read, and perceived? I will continue with what Inga already started. From our perspective, it was very important for us to see how resilient our public is to these um, interferences. Uh, 
I'm quite worried that we'll do as always. You know, we have a problem and we'll have a law and it will solve everything. It will not work that way because we have to understand society better. We have to understand how our minds are manipulated. What are the technologies, the means, approaches, tools? I'm really happy that Stratcom Group will be able to continue because it's a very important task and we need better cooperation not only with governmental bodies but also non-governmental media, NGOs, um, researchers, uh, so that we together could understand what should be studied, what skills should be improved, uh, how information should be conveyed to the public, how we approach those that live in social media because maybe this is one of those media skills that we will need to acquire. How can we convey quality content to these people? Why do you believe that our public is resilient? I lived for two months in, in, in Facebook and I, as the speaker says, needed a lot of milk to, to decontaminate myself. Yes, I saw that people understand that it's fake news, but they do not differentiate. If I see what they share, the fans of KPV, uh, they are very aggressive. They are so loud. And how they attacked me, I, don't, I, I cannot conclude that people are ready to cooperate or work together. Now, it's not a fact. It's not a positive statement. I wanted to say that we will not be able to ensure resilience uh, if we uh, have only regulation or uh, regulatory framework, what I wanted to say is that we'll need long-term engagement. Of course, I do not want to discard the idea of, of law. Yes, sometimes it works, but we do not know whether it will work in the future, uh, because what we did was not really, uh, or our election was not really uh, challenged in a way. Uh, that it was done in other places. Maybe in the future it will not be like that. Uh, speaking about 2016-17 uh, um, events, uh, yes, uh, you had this feeling, you know, that we know what happened then and, and now we can predict what will happen in the future, that people will be more resilient to fake news or misleading information. But if we look at the last uh, study by Oxford Internet Institute on um, American midterm elections, I think they followed or studied millions of tweets and, and 7,000 Facebook pages. They uh, established that 95% of information related to, to election uh, actually is misleading and that even politicians uh, that politi what the politicians have actually sent and quality content is only 5%. So the fact that we know how it worked in the past doesn't mean that we'll be uh, knowledgeable about that we'll know what will happen in the future. And I really agree with uh, those who said that we should invest in our ability to understand processes, how algorithms are developed, how information uh, um, is conveyed to us uh, how we are targeted, how we uh, can protect our data. Of course, regulation, yes, we'll need the regulatory framework, it is clear. But uh, if by following um, uh, the debates on the international arena, uh, I think everyone has come to the same conclusion that self-regulation will not work. We have to think about a different approach in the future, uh, for the future. Uh, the platforms have agreed about uh, a specific code that the platforms will follow, and that was done uh, together with the EU. And it already means that the uh, platforms understand that there is a problem and this um, code uh, entails a specific uh, evaluation uh, mechanism consisting of several steps. And it's very difficult to imagine that this will not uh, result in, in specific laws or regulations or whatever being adopted. 
we have to move forward in this direction because we have to be 100 percent sure that we have working mechanisms we have to uh, pressurize these platforms even now uh, by means of governments and but also by engaging the public because on the one hand uh, so that we would not expect that you know this cooperation this good cooperation with platforms will continue um, we have to ensure that social platforms would not be able to say, you know, that only governments uh, put this pressure on us and people are not really concerned. So we have to engage the public. I see that there are people who would like to add, so sorry for interrupting you. Let us see who pressurizes uh, social media platforms. <coughs> Why uh, is regulatory framework important? Because it can interfere with the business model. And if you have this key to the Google's door or, or Facebook's door, these are the people who advertise there or companies who advertise there. We are there for their purposes so that we follow these advertisements so that we, you know, uh, consume these advertisements, but the advertisers, they can affect what they do because if their business model is endangered, then they'll be ready to act. If there are scandals, for example, um, certain negative events and the share prices drop, yes, that's another motivation to do something. But I would be quite uh, skeptical, uh, skeptical about the pressures that the public could exert on them because that's not where the money comes from. I would like to comment about the national law and the framework. Uh, maybe that would be needed on the EU level or maybe on other levels. I believe that the process already uh, has started, and the process is called uh, Euro Elections 2019. We see that the Commission is quite active with regards to election. There are very many guidelines because Europe understands that there might be huge risks, how law enforcement has to act, how political parties have to act. I hope that this will not take very long. Of course, this will not happen before the election, but most probably after the election, there'll be a finalized framework that would guide us in these, in these uh, actions. Speaking about Mr. Ozolinch's comments, yes, we analyzed uh, election processes from 2016-17 and maybe some other election. Uh, we understood that ways uh, or, or means uh, used by social networks uh, to approach voters, they tend to change very quickly. They never repeat. There are new nuances before each and every election, and it's very difficult to, to find them, to forecast what will happen. But this is the kind of analytical work that we as an office have to do to prepare for an election. So what is our role in this control, uh, in controlling the pre-election activities? All parties have to have a level playing field. This is our main task. This ensures that we have democratic election. So by controlling these costs, <coughs> our purpose is to ensure that this main task is fulfilled. But even if we have framework uh, sooner or faster in Europe or, or somewhere else, irrespective of all of this, is very important, and we can do that in Latvia. We have to prepare a national law about the political games played by political parties. Because this is our responsibility, and no one will help us if we don't help ourselves. I, uh, I think that our office sees this as a comprehensive approach at higher levels and, and lower levels, including the national level. To continue, uh, namely what we can do 
in the presentation of uh, Ms. Kajuoka. Maybe it was not very surprising, but it still, in a way, surprised me was a uh, conclusion about those uh, people harboring uh, negative emotions, a grudge because of some ethnic um, aspects or maybe because they make less money or maybe because they are not as educated. And the second worrying uh, tendency uh, was the youth that don't want to uh, participate in uh, political processes. Uh, in this relation, I would like to refer uh, to the latest study by Re Baltic about Russian schools, uh, namely that they educate uh, pupils um, or the quality of education that they offer is lower than in Latvian schools, which means that they do not have the same ability as, let's say, Latvian youth uh, to uh, assess and, and, and work with this information. Do you have any uh, idea how maybe to address uh, these groups as well, how to approach these group? No, we don't have any plans. Uh, for our foreign guests, I would like to uh, say that we just published uh, a study on inequality problems and education inequality in uh, Riga schools. We have focused on this um, subject uh, for several years already in various scales. But we used examination results and ranged uh, schools of Riga and from uh, 10 uh, bottom or top 10 bottom schools, only one was Latvian school. And of course, there are many uh, arguments. But we were quite uh, surprised uh, about the positive reaction that this study received, and not only from Latvians, but also from Russian uh, audience. PayPal uh, donations is always a good uh, sign. Yes, there are these uh, discussions about, you know, we have to reform schools, especially Russian schools and so on. And maybe it is also the fault of our media that we have never actually listened to them because the parents of because the parents of these pupils in these schools say, you know, it's not that we are against studying in Latvian, but the director says that they cannot find Latvian teachers. They don't have books to study in Latvian. They either have to take, uh, to use uh, books uh, written for the Latvian schools. So basically, this shows that we don't listen to them. And now have a, uh, a Twitter spat with Janis Isalniks, uh, who comes from the National Union. I had an interview with uh, the director with the director of a Russian school, and this politician wrote a complaint to the security police, namely, namely you know, claiming that this director is instigating hatred. This shows that we do not listen to them. We cannot just claim, you know, Kremlin is to be blamed. We have to listen to them. And you cannot generalize. You cannot say, you know, one Russian is bad and all the Russians are bad. Uh, Stratcom, from the Stratcom point of view, I think if we look at global processes, there is a strong co correlation between um, weak education systems and uh, insufficient or maybe I'll say low level of education and say ability to uh, manipulate these groups. So we have to speak about the quality of education, and I'm not speaking here about higher education, about secondary, primary education, how uniform it is, what is the quality of this education, because that would ensure that our, if it's good, that our society is res uh, resilient. I would also, I think, tend to agree to the statement that this grudge, that this negative feelings, this is a story. And it, it travels generations. It comes from one generation to another generation in the same family, and it spreads and it festers, and we allow that. So this negative 
uh, sorry, the story is that provided at the national level, it has to be inclusive so that it cannot be exploited by some parties for their own purposes. For example, they find a vulnerability and, and use it to the extent possible to achieve their uh, ends. We have some time for comments and, and questions for the, from the uh, audience. Uh, maybe you want to say something. My name is Lolita Chigan, and um, um, I was also working uh, in Providus from 2002 to 2006, and these ele uh, elections, also some municipal elections, and I would like to say the following. It is unbelievable. We have uh, progressed greatly, and I am very, very glad about that that we do have institutions, state bodies that are forecasting uh, future, that we have Red Baltica that are um, um, executing monitoring and that can identify pro uh, problems. And this monitoring is not a strange word uh, that we do not know uh, what to do about. But um, in 2006, um, the election campaign was horrible. That was the time when um, these positivism campaigns came up, and there were situations that Jurgis uh, Sliepnieks um, said, uh, what would happen if we come up with positivism campaigns, and um, thus um, uh, we can um, extend the ceiling for spendings. And I was so naive at that time, and I thought uh, it is very unlikely that someone will do that, but they did. So, uh, thanks God we are not so naive anymore, and we are working together thanks to all of you and thanks to engagement of the society. And here I have a question. Of course, we can do a lot, but until uh, we have this um, general public or a voter that doesn't use any uh, media space, maybe just uh, looking at some videos on Facebook. I, as an MP who works together with uh, Mr. Kaiming in one of the commissions, I have uh, I have talked to these people, and I I know that those people in, exist. But how to reach those people who do not use any media space? Uh, that's why I mentioned this uh, survey. We have to acknowledge the amount of those people and what they use, how they educate themselves. Another experiment that we have to conduct, for example, we can uh, maybe uh, come up with a moderator or anthropologist who goes into those groups, who reach those groups, and uh, see uh, which is the pat uh, particular moment when those people uh, this eye-opening moment uh, when this person understands that there is a larger space outside. Uh, one of the model models could be uh, mu multiplying several versions of the same piece of information. But I do not know whether this is the solution. But maybe we have to come up with uh, this uh, survey, um, anthropological survey, how many of those uh, people living uh, without any information do exist there. And maybe there can be a guidebook similar to how to speak to small children, to victims of violence, etc. I want a handbook how to react, how, for example, a journalist could uh, react when you have an aggressive opponent. Uh, do you have to avoid uh, those people? Um, very often we do um, avoid those people, but if we avoid, then we have a Brexit. And if you do have ideas, which could be the experts who could come up with practical examples how to react in situation A or in situation B in order um, not to uh, convert these people, but just to open their eyes that there is a greater space outside. Here, I would like to react. It is not public yet, but we have been looking at what uh, makes people listen to um, the other party in digital environment. And um, our conclusion is the following. That what makes people 
listen to what is being said. Digital uh, environment works contrary to human uh, environment. If we have uh, different opinions, then probably one has to uh, reword uh, one's opinion uh, on a more milder uh, in a more milder sentence. In a digital environment, it's quite the contrary. You have to make even a, a stronger statement, uh, come up with even stronger words, uh, maybe become even rude uh, in order to be listened to. Uh, when uh, there is not a face in front of you, but something anonymous, then um, some other uh, aspects of humanity uh, e gets engaged so uh, we have uh, uh, we have um, concluded that if you want a reaction uh, in a digital environment then be harsher uh, be even louder but it's of course not uh, very constructive uh, this is my conclusion how, how and what is happening what to do with uh, this conclusion we have to probably investigate but uh, what um, my conclusion is that physical realia of this world do, do not world uh, do not work in digital environment. Thank you very much. We have uh, room for one more question from the audience. Uh, maybe you can uh, say who you are. I am Latvian from this planet. I have a planet. Uh, to uh, Lolita Chigan and Inga Spring. Uh, if you want to know what to do, then uh, listen to a rapper, uh, Julio, and uh, uh, he has a song about that. Okay, listen to that. Another comment from the panelists? Inga. Okay, I'm going to um, shut up uh, soon, but uh, this is this uh, shouldn't be empiric uh, research pre uh, um, pre election time when i was attacked by uh, populist um, uh, party uh, my colleague anda ruzit uh, helped me and she as a small bulldog uh, uh, kept commenting kept commenting on those negative comments uh, she, she um, did it with very much empathy. Uh, she didn't say you are you are stupid. Uh, she slowly uh, but very persistently uh, delivered facts, 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 and she sent me at one one point um, a history of their conversation. When at the end the attacker uh, said, "I'm sorry, I I um, overreacted." But it's very con uh, time consuming. Yes, you can talk. And um, um, yes, you can use these harsh words. You can be hardcore. But uh, I think that we have quite many people who are uh, not certain about one thing or about other things. And uh, with those people, we can talk. Those could be persuaded by facts. OK, this is the moment when I could uh, Oh, one, um, I, I could ask millions of questions and engage into conversation with each and every one of you, but uh, the time is up. But we can do just that during lunch. And let us resume within an hour at uh, 2.30, and I hope our uh, discussions will be equally fruitful. Thank you. Thank you.